Have you ever wondered what the Bible really says about money? I thought I knew everything about what the Bible said, but I don't. And this is after 40 years of studying the Bible. So I spent weeks researching the topic of money in relation to the Word of God, and you're not going to believe what I learned. Now, I'm here today to clarify, and you can fact check me if you need to. So go and grab your Bibles, because in this video, we're going to explore what the Bible doesn't say about money, exposing some common myths, and highlight what the Bible actually says. And trust me, you'll want to stick around for the last one because it's the most important one. First, let's address a common misconception. The belief that money is the root of all evil. This phrase is often quoted, but is actually a misinterpretation of the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that money is inherently evil. Rather, it's the love of money that leads to all kinds of evil. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 says that money itself is neutral. It's our attitudes and actions toward it that matter. Another myth is the notion that wealth is a sign of God's favor, while prosperity can be a blessing. The Bible also warns against the dangers of wealth and the love of money. Jesus himself cautioned that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 24. That's because wealth can often lead to pride, selfishness, and a misplaced sense of security. On the contrary, poverty is not always a sign of God's disfavor. The Bible is filled with examples of faithful people who endured poverty and hardship yet remained steadfast in their faith. Jesus praised the widow who gave all she had, even though it was just two small coins, Mark 12, 41, 44. This is important because this teaches us that God values the heart behind our giving more than the amount we give. Now let's unveil the myth that the Bible condemns wealth altogether. While the Bible does caution against the dangers of wealth, it also acknowledges that wealth can be used for good. The key is to use wealth wisely and generously, honoring God with our resources and helping those in need. One of the most misunderstood passages about money is the story of the rich young ruler. Many believe that Jesus told him to sell everything he had and give to the poor. But that's not entirely accurate. Jesus challenged the young man to let go of his love for wealth and follow him wholeheartedly. Matthew 19, 16, 30. It wasn't about the money itself, but about where the young man's heart was focused. Now let's address the concept of prosperity gospel which teaches that God guarantees financial blessings to those who have enough faith, while God does promise to provide for our needs. This belief can lead to a distorted view of wealth and faith. It implies that those who are struggling financially are somehow lacking in faith, which is not true. The Bible teaches us to seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto us. Matthew 6:33. Our focus should be on serving God, not on accumulating material wealth. Nonetheless, let's unwrap the myth that being financially successful equates to being spiritually mature. While financial prosperity is important, it's not the sole measure of our spiritual growth. True maturity is reflected in our character, our relationships, and our obedience to God's Word. Now, you might be wondering about the role of giving in biblical finances. Contrary to popular belief, the Bible doesn't prescribe a specific percentage or formula for giving. Instead, it emphasizes the importance of giving cheerfully, generously, and sacrificially. 2 Corinthians 9.7 God loves a cheerful giver, not one who gives out of obligation or compulsion. Let's remember that financial wisdom is ultimately about stewardship. God owns everything, and we are merely stewards of His resources. Whether we have little or much, our responsibility is to manage our finances wisely, honor God with our wealth, and use it to bless others. Understanding what the Bible doesn't say about money is just as important as understanding what it does say. By revealing common myths and exploring biblical principles, 
We can gain valuable insights that will help us navigate our finances with wisdom and integrity. Thank you for joining me on this journey of uncovering financial wisdom from the Bible. Let us know what other topics you want us to digest for Bible studies. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, take care and God bless.